All right, so we made it to the Limithons. Oh, well, I don't even have the monitor up, do I? Let's go ahead and turn that on. So we made it to Limithons last week. Last, bless you. Last Tuesday, I should say. Where we did A plus B sine theta and A plus B cosine theta. We talked about how uh, the ratio of A to B is going to give us either a loop, a cardioid, a dimple, or a non-dimple. We'll see what they look like here in a second. There we go. So here is the picture of our limosomes. If uh, A over B is less than 1, which means A plus B sine theta. Uh, if A over B is less than 1, that means B is bigger, right? So if A plus B sine theta or A plus B cosine theta, if B is bigger, then you get that loop. If A and B are equal to each other, you get that heart shape. If A over B gives you a value between 1 and 2, you get that little dimple, and if A over B is greater than or equal to 2, then you get kind of like a flat place, okay? But they're always going to be circle-ish, just what's happening on the end there around pi is what is interesting, all right? So now we want to graph something else, a different form. We're going to do something where we mess with theta. So here we got r equals 3 cosine 2 theta. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to look for symmetry, right? Because why? Why do we want to look for symmetry? Because it makes our job easier when we're graphing, right? If we have some symmetry, we may not have to graph as many points. So polar axis symmetry. How do we check for polar axis symmetry? Do we remember? We replace theta with negative theta? Okay. So if we replace theta with negative theta, what happens? We get r equals 3 cosine negative 2 theta. Bless you. Well, cosine is still an even function, right? So it's going to just absorb that negative sign, and you still get r equals 3 cosine 2 theta. Is that the same function? Is 3 cosine 2 theta the same as 3 cosine 2 theta? Yeah, it's the same function, right? So that does have polar axis symmetry. Okay. So how do we check for pole symmetry? Well, if we just do pole symmetry, we're just going to replace R with negative R. I don't know why they did this like that. but So that's going to give us negative R equals 3 cosine 2 theta, or R equals negative 3 cosine 2 theta. So are those the same? No, one's positive, one's negative. So it does not have pole symmetry. What about the line theta equals pi over 2? Here we replace both of them. R with negative R and theta with negative theta. So we get negative R equals 3 cosine negative 2 theta negative r equals 3 cosine 2 theta because the cosine just eats the minus sign. So r equals negative 3 cosine 2 theta. Is that the same? No. So all I know for sure is that it's got polar axis symmetry. So let's discuss real quick one more time. What was polar axis symmetry? That's like x-axis symmetry, right? That's anything 
on the top is going to be reflected on the bottom. So that means if it looks like you know, moment, then it'll also look like moment. If you can see that very well. All right. All right, so we want to graph it. So since it's got polar axis symmetry, all I really care about is doing from 0 to pi because I know from pi to 2 pi on the bottom half it'll be the same. Okay? So we like to do all the increments of pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, the values that we know from the unit circle. Okay? So, we're going to plug in r equals 3 cosine 2 theta. So, r equals 3 cosine of 0. What's cosine of 0? 1. So, 3 times 1 is 3. All right. When we plug in pi over 6, we get r equals 3 times cosine of 2 times pi over 6, which is pi over 3. So what's pi over 3? Cosine of pi over 3. 1 half. So 3 times 1 half, 3 halves. Okay? If I'm going too fast or you get lost in something, make sure you stop me. Yes, sir? Because it's 2 theta. If pi over 6 is theta, 2 times pi over 6 is 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an eraser. I really got to put in a work order. Fix my eraser. All right. So if I put in pi over 4, r equals 3 cosine of 2 pi over 4, which is just pi over 2. What's 3 times cosine of pi over 2? What's pi over, cosine of pi over 2? 0. So 3 times 0 is 0. All right. If I put in pi over 3, 2 pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. So what's cosine of 2 pi over 3? Negative 1 half. 3 times negative 1 half negative three halves. Well, we put in pi over two, we get three cosine of two pi over two, which is just pi. What's the cosine of pi? Negative one. Negative one times three is negative three. Then we do r equals 3 cosine 2 times 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. So what's cosine of 4 pi over 3? Still negative 1 half times 3. do 3 pi over 4, we get r equals 3 cosine of 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. What's cosine of 3 pi over 2? Zero. 0 times 3. And then 5 pi over 6, we get r equals 3 cosine of 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. And what's cosine of 5 pi over 3? 
one half times three, three halves. And then r equals three cosine of two times pi, two pi, what's cosine of two pi? One, one times three is three. All right, so we've worked out all of the values for r and theta. Yes, sir. Can we always do have zero, or six, or four, or three, so forth, so forth? Generally, that's what you're you're always going to use those values on the unit circle that you know. Okay. Yes. Now, when you graph these, this is what we're going to get. Okay. So let's look at them. Let's look at the points we've got. So we've got. 0, 3, right? So 0, 3. Then we had pi over 6, what? What was our pi over 6 value? 1 and a half? Okay. What was our pi over 3 value, or a pi over 4 value, I'm sorry? 0, right? Okay. Now, notice we're going in that direction. So you can draw your line in that direction. All right, so we went from there to power four. So where do we go next? Power three. That took us back to what? Negative one half. So instead of going to positive one half, we went to negative one half. And then for pi over two, negative three, so we went down instead of up. And then for two pi over three, negative one and a half. And then three pi over four, back to zero. So that completed that circle. And then we did 5 pi over 6, which gave us what? 1 and a half. And then pi 3. That gave us that. So notice, all we have graphed is the red part, right? But we know it has polar axis symmetry. So it automatically necessitates the fact that We're going to have that because of the part on the bottom. We're going to have this because of the red above it. And we're going to have this because of the red above it. That's what that symmetry told us. If you can't understand what the symmetry does for you, you're going to have to graph all the way around to 2 pi. Okay? If you don't understand what symmetry does, just graph the whole thing. Don't just graph to pi and assume symmetry. Graph all the way around, okay? Does that make sense? That being said, there's an easier way of graphing these. These are what's called rose curves. Here are what rose curves look like. For a sine 2 theta, or a sine n theta, I should say, or a cosine n theta. If a is an even number, it'll have two times that number of petals. If a is an odd number, it will have that exact number of petals. Okay? 
A will tell you how far out the petals extend. Cosine always will be centered on the x-axis. Notice there will always be a flower on the x-axis. For sine, if sine is even, then the Petals will generally be off on 45 degrees. If it's odd, they'll always be on pi over 2. Okay? So you, that's where you can start at. To determine where the rest of the petals are, all you have to do is say how many petals are there and divide the circle into that many pieces. So like if you had eight petals, okay, circle is 360 degrees, right? You divide 360 degrees by eight, that's how many degrees apart they have to be. Does that make sense? If you've got five petals, 360 divided by five, tells you how many degrees apart they have to be, okay? For example, let me Say we want to graph y equals 3 cosine of 6 theta. Hold on, before I do this. All right, so I want to graph this. It's got six theta, so that's an even number. So that means how many petals is it going to have? It's going to have 12. Even numbers have twice that many, okay? So it's going to have 12 petals. Is that a T or D? Petals? Petals? I don't care. It's one of those two. <laughs> are we biking or are we flowers? I don't know. So, it's got 12 petals. It's either going really fast or it's a flower. I don't know. So, that tells us how many degrees apart do they have to be. There's 360 degrees in a circle. We've got 12 petals. They gotta be 30 degrees apart, right? 360 degrees divided by 12 is 30 degrees apart. Okay? What is A in this case? Three, right? 
A equals 3, so that means the petals go out to 3. It's cosine, so that means that it has to be, one petal has to be on the x-axis or the polar axis. Okay? So, one, two, three. I have to have a petal there. And I know I'm going to have a petal every 30 degrees. So, I got one at 30, 60, 90, then, 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 then. Nana, 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 nana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it'll look like no, 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 no. I don't know why I'm making that noise. No, 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 no. That's what it'll look like. Okay? It's much easier than plotting points, right? If you just remember what those basic shapes look like and how to figure out where the petals go. All right? Any questions? And I will have the uh, sheet that's got all the different, sh I'm going to put a, a sheet together that's got all the different basic shapes together and it'll be posted in Blackboard uh, this afternoon, okay? All right, here we have a different kind. R squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta. So we want to check for symmetry. Does it have polar axis symmetry? What do we check for? We do theta equals negative theta. So we get r squared equals 4 cosine negative 2 theta, which gives us r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta. Is that the same? Yes. All right, let's check for pole symmetry. So we've got negative r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta, which is just r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta. Is that the same? Yes. And then we do the line theta equals pi over 2, which is just y-axis symmetry, and say r is negative r, theta is negative theta. So we get negative r squared equals 4 cosine negative 2 theta. That gives us r squared equals 4 cosine 2 theta. Is that the same? Yes. So this has polar axis symmetry, pole symmetry, and theta over 2, or pi over 2 symmetry. Okay. So when we graph this one, we can just do less values. All right, I'm sorry. My wife just sent me a text. She's trying to make pancakes from scratch for my daughter. She's not a she's not a cook at all. So that was rather rather funny. So we're gonna plug in theta equals zero. So R squared equals four times cosine of zero. So we get what's cosine of zero? One, so r squared equals four. So what is r? It's what now? If r squared is four, what is r? Or? All right, plus or minus two. If 
we do pi over 6, we get r squared equals 4 cosine of pi over 3. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Where do you get 2 um, over cosine? Like um, 4 cosine of 4 and 2 times 2 times? 2 times 0 is still 0. Okay. Yep. So now we do cosine of 2 times pi over 6, which is just pi over 3. So it's cosine of pi over 3. One half, four times one half is two. So if r squared equals two, what does r equal? Square root of two and negative square root of two. She put chocolate chips in them. Good for her. All right. And then we've got pi over 4. So r squared equals 4 cosine of 2 pi over 4, which is just pi over 2. What's cosine of pi over 2? 0. If r squared is 0, what's r equal to? r equals 0. Okay. Do we always use those same ones? What do you mean? Do we always use zero, five, six, one? Yeah, when you've got those symmetries, that's all you've got to use. Because this is what happens. You get zero gives you positive 2 and negative 2. Pi over 4, right, pi over 6, I'm sorry, gives you square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. And then pi over 4 gives you 0. So you get that and you get that. Okay? By the fact that you've got origin symmetry, you've got y-axis symmetry, you've got x-axis symmetry, that fills in the fact that you've got to have this and this. But this brings us to the last type of, bless you, last type of graph, and that's uh, lemnus skates. And lemnus skates are just infinity signs, basically. And they are r squared equals a squared sine 2 theta cosine 2 theta. <laughs> Okay. So they're going to go all the way out to A. And if it's cosine, it's going to go along the x-axis. If it's uh, sine, it's going to go along the 45 degree axis. Okay. Because sine does not have that y-axis symmetry or that polar axis symmetry, okay? All it has is origin symmetry. But notice that the cosine has origin symmetry. This and this are the same. That's origin symmetry. This and this are the same. That's polar axis symmetry. And then this over here and this over here are the same. That's pi over 2 symmetry. Okay? So the cosine has all of the symmetries, whereas sine only has origin, this and this. Okay? So let's do another.
What if we wanted to graph r squared equals 16 sine 2 theta? Is it in the form for a lemnus skate? Yeah, really all you're looking for is that r squared and that 2 theta. If you've got r squared and 2 theta, you're a lemnus skate, okay? So, what is A? Be careful. Remember, 16 is A squared. So A is 4, right? And we're assigned, so we're going to be going along the 45 degree axis. So that's here, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, any questions about lemnus skates? All right. Then everyone should be ready for the test, right? Let us pull up the quiz and see if there are any that anybody's having any major difficulty with. Has anybody worked on the quiz yet? Is it up yet? <laughs> if I haven't put it up yet, then nobody's worked on it. I haven't put it up yet. Okay. So when I put it up, then y'all can work on it. So let's look at some. Has anybody got any problems from the homework that they're experiencing that uh, have given them difficulty that they don't understand or other than anything from that graphing that, we, that you haven't done yet, that you haven't tried yet? Has anybody done any homework? Y'all worked on the homework at least? Okay. We are not giving me much. Absolutely. Let's see. All right, so we want to talk about going, are we talking about equations or just points? <laughs> just both? Uh, all right, so if we want to talk about points, say, say we have the point 3, 2 pi over 3. Is that polar or rectangular? going to be polar, right? It's got a it's got a pi in it. You generally assume that if it's got a pi in it, that's going to be an angle. So that's polar, so we want to go from polar to rectangular. So what equations do we use to get from polar to rectangular? X equals R cosine theta and Y equals R sine theta. This is the easy Going from polar to rectangular is the easy way.
because you just got two equations. X equals R cosine, Y equals R sine. And you just plug them in. So X equals 3 cosine 2 pi over 3, Y equals 3 sine 2 pi over 3. So what's cosine of 2 pi over 3? Negative 1 half. So that's going to be negative 3 halves. And what's sine of 2 pi over 3? It's root 3 over 2. So I've got 3 root 3 over 2. So we went from 3 2 pi over 3 to negative 3 halves, 3 root 3 over 2. And you always want to check and see if logically this makes sense in terms of what quadrant you're in. Okay? So 3 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is over here. Well, that's not it, but it's over in that quadrant. 3 is positive, so it's somewhere over here. Does negative 3 and positive, or negative 3 halves and positive 3 root 3 over 2, does that correspond to the second quadrant? Yes, right? Negative x, positive y. So check those signs and make sure that the quadrant of your original polar matches with the quadrant of your new rectangular, okay? That's one of the things you can use to check, okay? Now, let's talk about going the other way. Say you have the point negative 2, negative 4. And you want to go from rectangular to polar, all right? So how do we do that? We know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And tan theta equals y over x. So if this is the case, we can plug in x squared and y squared. We get r squared equals negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is 4 plus 16, which is 20. So if r squared equals 20, r is equal to square root of 20, which is just 2 root 5. Okay. And then tangent theta equals y over x. We need that to figure out what theta is. So we just say tan theta equals negative 4 over negative 2, which is just positive 2. So if tan theta equals 2, how do we solve that? We say that theta equals arctan of 2. We use our calculator. And you get that theta is say 63.4 degrees. So our new coordinate in polar would be 2 root 5, 63.4 degrees.
Absolutely. Hmm? It's not. See, you caught it. Here's why we have to be careful using our arc functions. And this is why we've got to check that. That's why I wanted you to make sure and check your original polar or your original uh, rectangular versus your new one. Because this is the perfect example of why you can make these little mistakes. This is not a mistake on your part or on anybody's part. It's not even a mistake on the calculator's part. It's just a mistake in the fact that when you do arc functions, it only gives you answers in the first or fourth quadrant. If your answer is in either the second or third quadrant, you have to extrapolate it. Okay? Remember, our arc function in our calculator is only defined on quadrants one and four, from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So, negative two, negative four, what quadrant is that in? It's in quadrant three. So I need to find the third quadrant angle that is equivalent to 63.4, okay? So how do I find that? You just add 180, okay? So do we know how to find the equivalent angles in each quadrant? It's the same way we found reference angles, okay? If you've got some angle, if this is our theta, then that's the equivalent angle. That's the equivalent angle. That's the equivalent angle, right? I'm looking for, if this is theta, this in here is 180 minus theta. This here is 180 plus theta. This here is 360 minus theta. So depending on what quadrant you're in, to find that equivalent angle in that quadrant, you use these formulas. In quadrant two, it's 180 minus that angle. In quadrant three, it's 180 plus the angle. And in quadrant four, it's 360 minus the angle. Okay. So here, you're absolutely right. We've got to add 180, 180 plus uh, 63.4 gives us 223.4 degrees. You're right, 243. I added 160. So using the arc function is any time that you're going to have to check those quadrants. Okay? Mm -hmm. You got a question? No? Okay. All right. So let's look at going from an equation to another equation. Say we have the equation. Uh, R equals say three cosine theta. We know we have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and tan theta equals y over x. These are all four of the little formulas that we've got. If I've got a cosine in my problem, which one of these is, am I most likely to want to try to use? The one with the cosine in it, right? X equals R cosine theta. But I don't have R cosine theta. I've only got cosine theta. So how am I going to make R cosine theta? 
We want to add it, multiply it, right? So I'm going to multiply both sides by R. Now, I have to ask myself, by doing this, do I mess up the other side? Because right now, on the other side, I have R, and there's really nothing I can do with R. Well, I can. I can take the square root of X squared plus Y squared would be R. If I add another R over there, what do I get if I multiply it? I get R squared, which is even better because R squared gives me X squared plus Y squared. So that's good. If I multiply R on both sides, it helps both sides. Okay? So if I'd say R times R equals 3 cosine theta times R, then I get R squared equals 3R cosine theta. Now I can substitute those values. So R squared is just X squared plus Y squared. R cosine theta is X, so I get 3X. I subtract the 3x, I get x squared minus 3x plus y squared equals 0. What do I want to do there? Leave it alone what most people want to do, but no. We want to put it back in, we want to put it in square form, so or in uh, circle form, so we need to complete the square on the x's. So we need to take half of this number and square it and add it to both sides. So we get x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourths plus y squared equals nine fourths completing the square so that I can rewrite this as x minus three halves squared plus y squared equals nine fourths and that's in standard form of a circle The video that I made on completing the square was on my thumb drive, so I'll need to make another one of those, I guess. Put it up on YouTube. All right, I'll do that this weekend, too. For those of you who are not savvy on completing the square. But the reason we do that is to get it in the standard x minus h squared plus y minus k squared form for a circle. Okay? Now that's one possible method of solving a polar to rectangular. Uh, what if you just had, say, let's see, What if you just had R equals 2? Right, just square both sides. Here, instead of multiplying both sides by R, you just square both sides to get R squared. Okay? So you get like that. So you get r squared equals 4, and then r squared is just x squared plus y squared. And then you're in standard circle form just right away. And then we had something that might look like theta equals pi over 4. If I've got theta, why not use this? What if I take the tangent of both sides? 
so. Take tangent of both sides. So that you've got tan theta equals tangent of pi over 4. What is tangent theta equal to? Y over X. And what's tangent of pi over 4? One. one. So if Y over X equals 1, I just multiply both sides by X to get rid of the fraction. Y equals X. Okay, so those are a couple of the different tricks of how to solve those type of equations. Now going from rectangular to polar tends to be just much easier because they just have X's and Y's in them. So you've got, say, 2X plus 3Y equals 5. How do you solve that? Well, we know that X equals what? R cosine theta. And 3 equals, I mean, Y equals... So that gives us 2R cosine theta plus 3R sine theta equals 5. We always want our polar equations R equals something, so we factor the R out. We get 2 cosine theta plus 3 sine theta equals 5. And divide by that 2 cosine theta plus 3 sine theta So R will be equal to 5 over 2 cosine plus 3 sine. Okay? And that's about as complicated as those type of problems you get. You might have some that have squares in them or, you know, something where you have to foil it out. Uh, say, say you had, say you started with a circle. What if you had uh, x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 4, something like that. So I know that x is r cosine theta minus 2 squared plus r sine theta squared equals 4. So I'm going to fold that first one out. So that's going to give me r squared cosine squared theta minus 4r cosine theta plus 4 and then plus r sine squared or r squared sine squared theta equals 4 just squaring the r sine theta So, if we subtract 4 from both sides, we get r squared cosine squared theta minus 4r cosine theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals 0. So, if we collect the r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta and move the other over, we get equals 4r cosine theta.
Why do that? Because I like to have the cosine squared and the sine squared together because what's sine squared plus cosine squared? It's one, right? So if I can get them to, together, that'll just collapse down to one. So if I factor that r squared out, I get cosine squared plus sine squared. So that just goes to one. So r squared times one, which is just r squared. And here, since cosine theta will sometimes equal zero, I can just divide by r and say r equals four cosine theta. So this is like the backwards of, of this r equals 3 cosine theta. So, but for that one, I don't think y'all have to do any like that. And I definitely won't put one like that on the test, but that's how you would do it. Okay. Any other questions? All righty then. I will have the uh, quiz posted this afternoon, and I will see you all on Tuesday. <laughs>